Hello and welcome. So if you're watching this video, the most likely place you've just come from is ESPN watching the uh, sporting event of the year, <laughs> uh, the Excel competition uh, that just aired. Uh, well, it's going to air tomorrow morning as of the time I'm recording this because I didn't get around to uh, preparing it as far in advance as I was hoping. So now I've got time for one take and I better hope I get it right. Uh, but, you know, that's semi true to the spirit of the event. Uh, so I'm going to try and do a quick walkthrough of the case that I and seven others did in that uh, in that knockout battle. So you may have already seen the event, but in case you haven't, a quick explanation of the case. Uh, let's start over here with the, I'll hide the answer sheet. Uh, start over here with the racetrack. So we've got four cars, red, green, blue, and black, racing around a track. We've got a few kind of sidebar questions about the track itself and the crowd and revenues and that kind of thing um, for the bonuses. And then we've basically got to figure out for each car rolls two dice at a time, moves along the numbered squares in the track according to that. And then uh, so the red car just moves whatever number of turns it rolls. The green car is slow going around corners, the blue car has a momentum rule, the black car eliminates another car if it lands on top of it, uh, and then we've got dice here. Um, so is there anything else I need to explain? Uh, I guess let's just quickly go through. So uh, the first couple of levels are just getting kind of oriented. Um, then there's like a level of understanding how the green car works, a level of understanding how the blue car works. Then there's a race between the red car, the green car, and the blue car. Uh, and then the last level, the hardest level, is a race between the red, green, blue, and black cars, where the black car eliminates other cars whenever it lands on them. So you never know in advance which car is going to be taking each roll. So that's the setup. Um, <clears throat> I think that's enough preamble. I'm going to hit uh, start on the timer and let's dive on in. So the first question is, how many spectators are watching the race from the front row? The front row defined as adjacent to the track. We also want to know how many cells constitute the racetrack. Now, it's it's pretty natural and it would be actually relatively competitive to just go and you know manually tag the racetrack uh, with an X or a number or something um, and kind of use that to, to figure things out and equally you can just you know manually count who's sitting in the front row although if you've watched the event you will know that that manual count uh, cost me big time because I missed this guy but in any case I, I don't think people watch my channel to uh, to watch me manually highlight a bunch of stuff so let me show you a way that you could do this uh, a little more systematically uh, so I'm just gonna format paste here and I'm gonna pop open the macro window which I rarely do but uh, I'll do it for this one uh, I'm just gonna say for each C in selection dot cells uh, C dot value equals C dot interior dot color next C and that will fill in oh, it's stretching some of the cells out just kind of weird never mind that will fill in every cell with a numerical value for its color uh, these are big numbers because this is I think like the RGB code uh, but the point is all oranges all greens all grays are the same so first things first we want to know how many uh, on the racetrack I'm just going to call this uh, I don't know color map CLMP uh, so how many cells in total on the racetrack? We want count ifs. Uh, CLMP is that number that I just copied. Uh, okay, then how many spectators are watching in the front row? So here we're going to say, uh, I'll just copy and paste format again so I can orient myself, and then I'll say if. Actually, let me, I'm going to um, come down. Sorry, first thing I want to do is I've got red and white as the borders of the track. So I'm just going to find and replace the red number with 255, which is the white number. And then I've just got one uh, number that identifies the outside edge of the track, which is 255. So then I'm going to come down here and I'm going to do a formula to figure out where I am. So uh, I'm going to say if uh, this is equal to a person, uh, then I want the color. So if uh, this is equal to uh, that number, then it's orange, otherwise green. Uh, and then if, count if, if any of the surrounding cells 
R255. That means you're in the front row. So F, otherwise B. Uh, sorry. No, here I wanted to say and that, and otherwise blank. Draw and enter, and hopefully that'll fill in. Yes, so now I've got orange back, orange front, green back, green front, and so on. So now I just need to figure out uh, orange back, uh, green back, orange front, green front. So count, oops, what happened there? Count, uh, probably spelled it wrong, count ifs. This range is this range, and that tells me how many of each of them there are, and then from the instructions, well, hang on, first just how many in the front row, and that's just going to be the sum of these two front ones, and then the second question is, uh, how much revenue do we make? And here we're told 500 for a front row green seat, 200 for a back row green seat. So these are 500, uh, these are 200, front row orange is 350, and back row is 150, so 350 and 150. So total is just the sum product of this values with what each of them, uh, how many of each of them there are. Okay, so the next bonus question is what is the total number of pips on all the dice? Uh, now here it's going to be helpful to have a little lambda. Um, so if you happen to know uh, the Unicode of these, uh, you can just use it directly, or if not, you can go check. The minimum of these is 9856, uh, and they come out in order. So if you do minus 9855, uh, that gives you converts dice. So here we have 34525, etc. It turns into 34525, etc. And that is going to be a very helpful lambda to have. So I'm going to say lambda x, or lambda dice, I guess, uh, Unicode dice. Minus 9855. Take that, make it a named range. I'll call it pips. And close. And then the bonus question asks what is the total number of pips on all the dice in all the levels? So here I'm going to say pips of. Uh, do, do, do. No, I'm going to say if NA pips these stack. I'm going to stack them all together. Uh, I want to exclude the examples. And the if NA will mean that it just ignores anything outside the ranges. And one more. Oh, it's always so fiddly doing this. So close the VSAC, close the pips, close the FNA, zero. And then I need to wrap that all in a sum. Get the total value of all the pips. And that checks out. Okay. So now, <clears throat> uh, the red race car starts from zero, rolls these. Where does it get to? So we just want sum of pips of this. Cool. Uh, Reverse two-dimensional lookup, what is the correct Excel address for each of these cells in the game board? Okay, so you could just uh, kind of do this directly, but I think it's going to be helpful for me to say um, to call of if is number. This. Then this. Was in a uh, and to call ignoring errors, so that'll unwrap those 136 cells, 135 cells, including the zero, in the order that they appear here. So in other words, if you read across here, it's 36, 37, 38, blah blah, blah then 77, 78, and so on, uh, which is exactly what I want. And then I just want to unravel in the same order uh, the addresses, uh, and that's going to be this and this. And so now I have the address for every location. Uh, and now actually what I'd really like to do is just uh, sort by, sort this by this. Um, actually, sorry, better to have, have them both together. Sort this by column one. Okay. <clears throat> 
So now this should just be a matter of saying index on here lock by this plus one. Okay. Now, so levels three, four, five, six, and seven all deal with the race car. Uh, I think we probably don't need to do anything funky with the red one. We can just do the sum of pips. So you need to figure out first how far it goes. That gives you a number, and then you need to convert that number into an address, just like this. Um, so take that, put it here. And I think after that we don't deal with addresses anymore, so I can ignore those. Is that right? Yes, numbers, numbers, numbers. Good. So we can ignore addresses. All right, so now we need to figure out how the green car works. Um, but we also need to set up uh, a more general solution. So I'm going to add a new tab, call it model. Uh, and I'm going to break out a more detailed example. So let's see, let's start with example four. Um, and I want to X look up that once on column B, returning from column C to get the level, because it'll be slightly different structures for level four versus five versus six. Uh, and then I want to look up again on here to get the data. But now the question is how far out does it go? Oops. So here, oh no, here it goes out to column EZ. So we want G to EZ. Uh, so G to EZ. And I would like to I'm wondering how that will behave if I wrap it in pips. Yes, that will throw value errors, which is exactly what I want, because then I can say two row of that, ignoring errors. Uh, yes, ignoring errors. And then I would like to, these are all kind of pairs of moves, so I'd like to wrap them. Uh, so I'm going to wrap calls by two. So just quickly double check, six, four, 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 one, three, six, four, 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 one, three. So that's wrapping the right way, so that's good. Uh, so this is dice one, dice two, poodle. Uh, I guess I'll do it in a flexible way so that it'll expand. But I call that lambda x sum x. Okay. So now, mm, R. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a list of the cars. So then here I'm going to say switch. It's level four. I think we just have the green car. Level five, we just have the blue car. Level six, we have three cars. I have to check the order. Mm. So the first check I got this right. So it's yes, blue car for level five. Green car for level four, yes. So then here it goes red, green, blue, and here it goes red, green, blue, black. Okay, so three stack red, oops, green, blue, and if it's seven, then that and black. Okay. Huh? Why is it throwing error? Is it four? Oh, sorry. There we go. Okay, so just quickly check. Example five gives me blue. Example six gives me red, green, blue. And example seven gives me red, green, blue, black. Good. So back to here for now. <clears throat> Actually, no, let's. So I want to set up the logic. So let's go all the way to example seven, I guess. So I guess I'm going to have this be, I'm going to have this row be the active car. Uh, so then I'm going to need a previous location for each. Um, 
and that'll, that'll all start off as zero. And then I'm going to need to figure out where it goes to. So, yeah, I guess what I want is to have, I want to have a block that works out the logic for each of the four, and then I'll just apply whichever one is relevant. So, yeah, so I'll just figure out from the previous location that's at the top associated with the active car, and from this dice, where do we end up? So with red, it's simple. It's just previous location plus total. Black is the same, previous location plus total. And then green and blue are more complicated. So let's look at the rules for those. So green is slow on turns. It needs a new dice to take a sharp turn. So if you look on the on the track here, like at 12 to 13 is a sharp turn, 19 to 20 is a sharp turn, uh, 24 to 25, I guess, yes. No, that's not a sharp turn, I guess, because you go gradually, but then 35 to 36 is a sharp turn. So anyway, there's a list of, uh, of sharp turns here. So basically, if you arrive at any of these, you have to stop and use a fresh dice to get ahead. So let's just look at the example. Green car is located on cell nine, you roll a six and a five. Um, Whichever one you roll, you're going to stop when you get to 12, and then go on again after that. And you pick the dice in the best way. So uh, in this case, you're going to use the 5 to get you to 12, where you stop, and then use the 6 to move on after that. That'll get you to 18. Um, and if you had used the 6, you'd still have stopped at 12, and then the 5 would only take you to 17. So, okay. Um, so how are we going to do that? Uh, well, I guess first thing we want to figure out is next corner um, actually I'm going to say next corners I'm going to say filter that where that is greater than uh, do I want greater than or equal to no greater than is fine it's greater than C19 so these are all the upcoming corners at which you might have to stop. The reason that I'm pulling them all in is because there is one case where two corners are close together. So potentially the green one could have to deal with slowing down at 76, then taking another dice and then slowing down again at 80. So here we're going to say uh, if the simplest case is if the previous location plus the dice is uh, less than or equal to the next corner, then we don't have to do anything. We just say previous location plus the dice. Otherwise, we're going to take um, the max of a few different things. So we're going to take the max of, you might just have to stop at the corner. Or uh, if the starting position plus the min, I don't know, let's just do each one separately. Starting position plus first dice, um, if that is greater than or equal to the next corner, then we would have the next corner plus the second dice. So this, well, the colors up here, thank you. So I'm taking the max of three scenarios. One is uh, that your two dice together can only get you to the next corner. The next one is your first dice can get you to the next corner and then you use your second dice. Uh, and then the last scenario is that your second dice can get you to the corner and then you use your first dice. So if that's, if your first dice can get you there, then you take that plus that, otherwise zero. And then same thing, but with the dice the other way around. Oops, sorry, comma there. Uh, so if that plus c4 is greater than that, then take this plus c3. Um, max of those, and we've covered the other case already, so I think that's it for green. Um, the one thing that I want to worry a little bit about here is, um, so I mentioned the possibility where your next corner plus one dice could get you into another corner, so I actually have to modify this slightly. So if the first dice gets you to the corner, you don't get the corner plus the second dice, you get the lower of 
the corner plus the second dice and the next corner after that. Um, oh, this could be blank, so sorry, I have to be even more careful. So we'll say if uh, this is greater than zero, then the min of this sum and that, otherwise just that sum. OK, and then we replicate all this down here, uh, but swap C4 for C3. And then we close the max, close the if. I think that's the logic for green working. We'll come back to blue in a minute. So let's go all the way out here so that we're covering our biggest one. Um, and let's go back to example four. So we're dealing with just green. Um, and for now, we'll just do that. And we'll do... Hmm, fine, for now, I'll just do this and just see if I can get green to work. So this would say green ends up at, hmm, that doesn't look good. So here it gets to 10. And then starting from 10, oh, sorry, because I haven't copied this across. My bad. Okay. So it gets to 10, then 16, 20, 30, 36, 45, da, 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 and it gets to 74. Is that the right answer? It is. That's good. Um, so, okay, I'm going to have to make this more flexible in a minute, but that is green dealt with. So let's just get the green result. Yeah, that's what I want, I think. Uh, and I want to data table that for all these values. And column input cell is going to be my A1 up here. And let's see if that comes out right. I'm already 20 minutes in. I'm going to have to speed up, but okay. Cleared that level. So now blue. Blue gets a bonus. So if you roll a 10, 11, or 12, then you get a momentum effect, which is plus 5, only until the next sharp turn. So, there's a, yeah. so if you're on cell 0, you roll a 6 and a 5, that gets you 11. You're eligible for five bonus moves, but the next sharp turn is at 12, so you only get to 12. Okay. Momentum effect may be zero if your main move takes you to the start of a sharp turn. Okay. So let's have a quick look at this. So here we're going to say it's the previous location plus uh, the total roll plus if the total roll is greater than or equal to 10, then then, 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 it's going to be okay, so first things first, let's give this a name we'll call this base so your base position is that uh, then let's call this momentum is that greater than or equal to 10 uh, then we'll say next corn is going to be x lookup base in the list of sharp corners, which is here. Lock, returning from the list of sharp corners. Lock, uh, exact match or next larger item. And I guess if not found, we'll just return 1000 because you might be after the last sharp corner. Um, so that's the next corner after the base. Then we're going to say if momentum, then base plus, sorry, then min of base plus 5 and next corner, otherwise base. I think that's the logic for blue. So let's give it a try. If we go to example 5, that has blue ending up on 77. It's supposed to end up on 93. Not good. Okay, so let's see what's going on here. You roll a 6, gets you to 6, fine. You roll a 12. 18 gets you to 23. Seems good. Then you roll an 11, gets you to 34. Uh, should get you to 35. Why are we not getting momentum here? Okay, so let's work through this one. So the base is 29. Wait, 
Tony, nein. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. This is where I really need to make my formula more flexible now. Uh, okay, so uh, call it actual, uh, and that's going to be um, x look up this in here lock returning from here. Um, then for now, I'll just point this to there instead of the other one. That gets me to 93, and that's good. I still need to make this a little more flexible, but for now, let's see if we can uh, get this level out. Got six minutes left. Probably not going to clear the whole thing in the 30 minutes, unfortunately, but that's okay. Okay, so we clear that level. So now level six. Level six is where we really need to make this piece work. So let's try and do that. So I have red, green, blue. So what I want to do is bump red to the end. So here I'm going to say sort by, I'm going to take this, sort by uh, this equals this. So that'll be true for the red, which will bump that to the end because true sorts after uh, false. And, and we're going to need to go further with all of this. This one goes out to here. Okay, so this goes red, green, blue, red, green, blue, red, green, blue. That's good. Um, chances of there being nothing else to fix. Oh yeah, sorry, previous location we gotta fix. Um, so here we're gonna say uh, x look up this in this returning from Okay. Okay. So, we've got to make this dynamic, I guess. So we're going to say if this not equal to blank, then zero. So the, this way it'll it'll expand to be the right size. So now I've got three zeros. So now I'm going to x look up this in this returning from this. Uh, Quite right, so I'm going to say if this is equal to the previous active car, then I want where we actually ended up. Otherwise, x look up. Yeah, five seven seven. Yes, seven seven eight. Okay, good. That's working. Ooh, something's going wrong in the middle, but all right. Okay, so something went back to zero. That's definitely not good. So here we're looking at blue in here. Blue is going back to zero. Oh, right, because I haven't copied it over far enough. Fine. So fix that. Okay, no huge alarming calc error. Oh, yeah, there are now over here alarming calc errors. Uh, oh, and that's because of here. All right. So I need to just say filter that. Uh, if it doesn't match anything, just give me 1,000. Hopefully that checks out. All right, so is there anything else I need to change? That might just work. <laughs> I'll feel very, very good about myself if it does just work, but let's say it's possible. Um, okay, so then we need to figure out when does somebody finish? Uh, so, do, do, do. so finish is gonna be this is greater than or equal to 135. Okay, um, then I guess I'm going to want a round number here. Uh, for that, I'm just going to say count ifs of this is this. In other words, how many times has this car already raced? And I'll lock that first cell of the range. Okay, so now I want to. I need to get the winning car and the round. So we're going to say, first let's figure out the round. I'm going to X match true against, uh, have we finished? And that says, 
59. So then I want index who's the active car in that round and index the round number. Oops, no, here. For that same 59. That gives me green 20, which is the answer. So let's see if we can get by A1. Come on. Oh, yeah. Feels so good when it works. Uh, all right, so uh, seven. Can I do this in a minute and a half? Probably not, but it's not out of the question. So basically, I need to filter this for if something gets eliminated. Um, so hmm. I think I'll just do this. Eliminate. Uh, and that's going to be uh, this not equal to black. So black never eliminates itself times the previous location is equal to the current round ending location times active car equals black. I think that's the logic. And then here we just want to um, let the still in filter this by this equals zero and then we want to okay so I did not make it in the 30 minutes but I'll still feel pretty good if I can get this to work okay so let's pull up example 7 so we can get something eliminated and space it out a little Okay. Um, oh, okay, so good. Here's something getting eliminated. So on this turn, black gets to position 12, and green was previously on position 12, and green gets eliminated. So I think that works then. So oh, no, I just need to extend all of this again. And what is the actual question? On what row number will the first race car cross the finish line? I think is this, except that I might need to extend the range. So it has to go out. Oh, BJ is not enough. Oh, hang on. So I need to extend that further as well. Missed that. Oops. Okay. So now I want to go out to where am I calling them? BY. Okay. Uh, so out to BY and I'm getting 42, which is checking out. That's awesome. And the column input cell is A1. Whoa, holy crap, that just became NA. Okay, that was just a temporary glitch, I guess. Uh, sometimes it does weird things in the interim steps while it's calculating a data table. And that checks out. Uh, okay, so I'm going to stop time. I didn't quite make it in the 30 minutes, but I did make it in uh, in 30 and a half minutes. If you have a sharp eye, you'll notice it is saying I have one wrong. Um, I don't... Oh, hang on, sorry. I actually haven't... Oh, start the timer again. <laughs> I haven't done bonus five, because that's just based on these. So uh, I have to multiply the max of uh, level four and level five by the min. Of, I don't know why I put an extra bracket there, min of level 5 and level 4. And that checks out. Okay, so now I'll stop the time again. <laughs> um, so yeah, according to this, I'm off by 12. Um, but I think, I think, um, the first time... Well, obviously on the day I did not make it to level 7, I didn't make it to level 6, I didn't even get everything before that out. But the first time that I worked through this fully after the fact, uh, I actually agreed with the official answer here, which I think is 72 instead of 69. Um, th this may have been corrected by the time you get this version out in the world, because I did let them know about this. But th there's a nuance in this, which is, uh, I mentioned 
the green car could be in a scenario where it hits both of these corners on the same turn and is limited. So let's just find where the green hits 80. Uh, here it is. So on this turn, green's previous position is 75 and it rolls a 5 and a 2. Uh, and so what I originally did when I did this was I said, okay, it can just use the lower dice to get to 76 and then it can do five more from that. So I added one, two, three, four, five. But I didn't take account of the fact that there was another corner here. And if I make that change in this model, because I did check this earlier, if I make that change in this model, it would also say, have green go to 81, and that would change the uh, change the result a little bit and have the race end uh, a couple of turns earlier, later, I can't remember, a couple of turns slightly differently. Let's see, what is the answer here? Uh, 72 have it end a couple of turns later. Oh, I guess maybe it means green gets eliminated or something. Anyway, uh, but if you're being very, very careful about it, uh, then you would have to say they use their first dice to get there, use their second dice to get there, but they're stopped twice on the same turn. Um, so like I said, I, I don't know that that uh, nuance may have been corrected by the time the thing gets published or not, but uh, I will stand here and say I, uh, I stand by my 69 for that one. But anyway, that's the gist of it. Uh, as, as you can imagine, I have, uh, I've had plenty of time to think about better ways to do this uh, since I floundered my way through. Uh, the whole thing started falling apart for me when I failed to notice that this person here was sitting in the front row when I was doing my manual count. And uh, <laughs> I never completely recovered from that. I also managed to spend I, I decided, I think I was right about this, I decided that the green car was harder than the blue car, so I skipped level 4 and went to level 5, but then when I put my answers in the system to check them, I put my level 5 answers in the first blank space, which was level 4, which meant uh, I spent a long time trying to debug a level 5 that was actually basically working uh, before I figured that out. So anyway, comedy of errors, but that's always the way it goes. I was happy to still uh, still be not eliminated at the end of the game uh, and you can't really complain about being beaten by either Andrew or Brittany. So uh, speaking of which, uh, I am going to have Andrew and Brittany joining me uh, for a live uh, debrief chat about our uh, our experiences on ESPN uh, next Tuesday evening. So I'll, uh, I'll post something for that shortly. Thanks for watching. See you next time.